In today's episode of Europa Universalis 4, I will play England under Henry VI of Lancaster, who was definitely not the greatest ruler of England. Look, he has all zeros. During his reign, England lost the rest of its French possessions. The country was in such chaos that there was a bloody civil war called the War of the Roses. Well, you know, here are these two roses, and these two roses were fighting each other. Pew, pew, pew. But what if Henry had shown sharpness of mind after all, and would be interested in the charms of his beautiful wife? It is possible that the War of the Roses would never have happened. Could England have chosen a different path to greatness then? Well, the way of Great Britain. We all know how it ended. What if the dynasties of France and England merged? I don't know, but I suppose it could be interesting. Hello guys, this is Lucas. Let us assume that Henry is a sane ruler after all, and he knows that another war with France could be very costly for England. Therefore, he decided to fulfill the terms of the previous peace treaty with France and give her back Maine. No one said that the province was supposed to be intact. Therefore, he reduced the autonomy. What pissed off the local population? He also collected additional taxes, so plundered. I mean prepared to be handed over to the rightful owners of the province of Maine. Decided to sell back to France. France should appreciate it. After all, he could also sell this province to Provence. This duchy, however, paid a little less. Returning Maine could already end the Hundred Years' War. However, Henry had a different plan. He wanted to build an anti-French coalition, mainly with countries that officially did not like this country very much. In this case, the Kingdom of Castile and Aragon. To this end, he himself declared France France, an enemy of England. And in addition, Scotland and the Ottoman Empire were hit. What did the Turks do? No one knows this. It was also necessary to ensure privileges for the social classes in England. However, there was a problem here. The English nobility could collect extra taxes from the peasantry, which did not go to the royal treasury. The easiest thing was to increase the amount of crown land, which would weaken the nobility enough that this privilege could be taken away from them. What bad can happen? After all, the nobility will not revolt. However, to appease the states, he gave out one privilege, supremacy over the crown. He applied to the merchant state for a cheap line of credit, and this allowed him to recruit the army. During the National Assembly, the state of the nobility decided that it would be nice if the ruler provided recruit strength at 50%. They will reward you with a cheaper minister. The easiest way to do this was to simply unrecruit the army and basically paying off our cheap line of credit. Henry sent light ships to guard the trade routes in Lübeck. Oddly enough, that was better than keeping the fleet in the English Channel. Besides, he had heard of a certain Eric of Gotland, who met a red-haired pirate and started raiding ships in that region himself. But that's a whole other story. The rest of the fleet was transferred to the Irish Sea. This generally involved plans to prepare an invasion of Ireland and Scotland, but that's only after completing the quest from the nobility. As England was supposed to be a peaceful country for the next five years, well, it reduced spending on forts and the army. By the way, the Lord of York got the right to sit in the House of Lords. This came with some bonuses for the lands he managed. The House of Lords is the English Parliament, where every 15 years we can start a debate. And each of these debates has some benefit to England. And here I will add a little outside of the main story. Take a look at all the new debates that have come up. Some are really powerful, and there are also unique debates for virtually every country. So it's worth looking at every country that might have a parliament. Henry knew he needed a new prime minister, not to waste time on this whole political cesspit, civil rights and stuff. Then all he had to do was convince each of the lords to support an appropriate candidature. Of course, we are not talking about any corruption here. He was just persuading. Henry rather wanted to pursue a balanced policy. He hired a previously appointed prime minister. The administrative advisor was Johnson. Something. He also employed a certain military minister. However, he suspected him of having some connection with the French. It also managed to lead to an alliance with Austria. Yes, the anti-French coalition is growing stronger. In the meantime, Henry's diplomacy must focus on getting favors from countries such as Castile and Aragon although he managed to prevent a bloody war with France. Well, unfortunately, unrest in England continues to grow. The people want an heir. The nobility wants an heir. Henry, however, not so much. Because, you know, kids are hard choices and stuff. Royal marriages, and what is it for whom? Tournaments in England. Tournaments are a tradition all over Europe. For centuries, it has allowed knights to show off with ever larger club. I mean copies. In order to hasten the invasion of Ireland, additional conscription was made. Our king has applied for a cheap line of credit again, and so an army was formed, ready to invade. Air? And what is it for? We still have time. After all, we are not in danger. But children are terrifying. After six months, we're fighting five wars at once. Our troops are besieging virtually all the residences of the Irish lords. Newly acquired possessions, however, will not be core to the English crown because Henry has slightly different plans for Ireland. During the Irish wars, 
Henry VI died, and unfortunately he left no offspring. As a result, the War of the Roses broke out. Surprise! Claims to the throne reported two powerful families, Lancaster and York. Who would you choose here? I have a feeling House Lancaster should continue to rule. And again beyond history, the paradox restored the ability to view rebel statistics again, so it's worth a visit from time to time. Unfortunately, the Kingdom of Denmark intervened and supported the rebels. Our troops under the command of John Talbot moved on the largest army of rebels. Yes, we definitely want to invest in agritourism rebel armies smashed, and Richard of York fled from England. We are now waiting for his return. And this one gathered such meager forces again in York, not in Gloucester. In addition, the Norwegians invaded Wessex. Fortunately, Richard York dies in the Second Battle, which has matured quite a bit in the meantime, and the War of the Rose is over. And as a result, a new dynasty was born, the Tudor dynasty. Again, a little off the story. This event is very important in England. Always bring the Tudors to the throne, because as a result of this, you get later two very strong rulers. Ending the War of the Roses brings many benefits to England, loyal nobility, and of course, a new dynasty. This is a new blank slate, so less aggressive expansion. Unfortunately, the conquest of Ireland gave less land to the crown than I thought. Hard! Lollard heresy? Not to be confused with the lolly heresy. This is not the same, but we still have to stop them, because the communists were against capitalism. To end the Irish war, it was necessary, invading the capitals of the Danes. A bold move by our new ruler, and so the last duchy of Ireland fell. And as the Irish are quite a proud nation, we need to start a debate in Parliament on the future of the Kingdom of Ireland. Should it remain under the direct control of the Kingdom of England, or maybe under a personal union? Richard III decided to create the Kingdom of Ireland. He knew he wouldn't have time to govern these lands. It increased the prestige, all times of the Kingdom of England. Thanks to this, it will be able to have more vassal states. King Richard considered attacking the Burgundians. However, these were associated with the defense alliance with the Kingdom of Aragon. So one of our coalition partners against France? So he put it off until later. He dealt with matters of strengthening the manor. And yes, this will affect the crown land. No, it's time for some London development. Thanks to this, the royal power became so strong that she could deprive the nobility of this privilege. But to appease the social classes, the king gave out additional privileges on the points of the monarchy that strengthened the court. Privileges on cheaper advice. In the clergy, there are additional influences of the papacy and religious diplomat. Placed was given a charter for a commercial merchant fleet. Plus at the social gathering, the king wanted to please one of the groups, just so you know. Take back their land again. It's also time to make a decision. Will we respect the Taurus Treaty? We can respect it and follow the path of Great Britain, which will allow us to strengthen the country internally or maybe go somewhere else. Well, this story we already know. Anyway, England had been preparing for war with France for the last few years. It's gathered alliances, built an army, paid its debts. England cannot abandon its Angevin claims. Now that England has made a choice, England has certain goals to fulfill. Preparatory work for our Union Act has also started. And what it is, you will see. Unfortunately, in the meantime, the Kingdom of Castle got involved in a rather hard war. Practically with the entire Margrave, there was only England left to wait. Fortunately, not for long, our allies will answer the call. This path is often chosen by English political doctrine. First, they assemble a coalition and only then move on the enemy. True? Our troops attack the Scots first, of course. We want to get them out of this war as soon as possible and break their alliance with Burgundy. Although, maybe not. Unfortunately, our continental fortresses were not prepared for sieges in advance. But it's Richard III's fault. It's not my fault. He should remind me of that. After a series of defeats, the Scots agree to a white peace. France knows it's fighting for its life. And you can see it in the losses it inflicts on coalition partners. In the meantime, there are voices at the English court that the union of these two countries will be established. Neighbors won't like it. Therefore, the time has come to send our diplomats to appease outside countries, as well as building our spy network in France. The more dynamic it is, the less the local nobility will shout abroad, because for now, the French nobility is pretty loud. Keep your fingers crossed that I don't forget to show it to you how effective this method is. In the meantime, our ruler, of course, has not forgotten about the fact that London needs to be developed. It's the capital of Europe, after all. The more so that we can introduce some foreign ideas in our country. The Battle of Paris was truly bloody. However, it ended up being our victory, the Swiss surrender. And in the meantime, our ruler is reforming the system, strengthening the House of Lords. End of the war. France has fallen. 900 ducats fly for us. We'd rather put it in debt anyway. 
Look, practically no country will come out to the coalition. I showed you. This time, I remembered. And of course, our Lord knows that he needed to improve relations with France as soon as possible. Because if he dies, and these relations will not be good, well, the Union will end pretty soon. The Burgundians wanted to take advantage of the opportunity, and they attacked France. However, France is now under English rule. That's why King Richard called all his allies to arms, to defend England. The English Parliament is ready to hold another debate. Now, however, England can only benefit from one reform at a time. So we'll do it later. Let's focus on fighting the treacherous Burgundians. The war with Burgundy is going very well for England. As a result, they will demand breaking the alliance with Britain and Scotland. Huge war reparations, and we will remove the status of the rival. But I don't know how to justify it in the story. After this war, the alliance with Austria was dissolved, because it was so weak that it couldn't even be a rival to England. Despite the efforts of English diplomacy, relations with the Burgundians are still very bad. Besides, Richard is following the punch. He declared war on Britain and Scotland. The Kingdom of Castelli did didn't seem to like it, because he began to see England as a threat. It might even be good. Ireland took a hit from the Scots. This allowed us to focus on the conquests of Britain, which must be under the direct rule of the English crown. If we want to change the personal union with France into a real union, it simply requires having a large amount of land in the region of France, and that's the biggest challenge. I currently have 12 provinces. In the meantime, the Duke of Burgundy dies, and since the Burgundian nobility, well, what is total patriarchy? They don't accept Mary on the throne. The Union of Burgundy and Scotland is concluded. This is probably the worst scenario that could have happened to us. Additionally, it is possible that the Holy Empire will intervene. We'll see what he decides to do. Will Austria relinquish territory? But will it break it all down into smaller countries? <laughs> Richard decided to take advantage of the splendor that England enjoyed on the international arena. No, no, to transfer subordinate states for half the price, because we can achieve this effect thanks to spy ideas. Besides, thanks to espionage activities, we can reduce aggressive expansion. And England happens to be very close to implementing these ideas. Time for new, cheap loan to introduce institutions in England. This will allow us to introduce a new level of administration in the state. Plus, as the Pope is quite old. Then let's try to influence the Cardinals, that they would elect an English Pope at the next conclave. Let's use the influence of our merchants to warm England's image abroad, especially among German principalities. And here again, I have to say something beyond the plot, because I was planning to play for a different idea, not starting with spyware. I plan to play this campaign from influence administrative ideas, then take the infrastructure to the couple. Because it combined with diplomatic, it gives us 10 years less time to eat personal unions? Well, I think in this case, in this campaign, spy ideas are begging to be taken. And these actions influence the fact that the takeover of Burgundy by England, nobody cares. Great success. The Burgundian nobility is even pleased. Our king, after this war, knew that he would not conquer anything for at least 20 years, so he set about expanding the trade and economy of our country. He started, of course, with trade centers, because that's what England stands for. I wonder if there is any debate in Parliament that reduces aggressive expansion. The time has finally come to hold a debate to improve French-English relations. This debate also reduces the cost of advisors. Surely the French are taking the jobs of native Englishmen. It's time to reduce autonomy, because remember, only absolute power. Really? Now? After all these wars? Abomus English Pope. That's all I have to say on the subject. England had become a large enough empire that it was time for regional councils to be introduced, which will make it easier to collect taxes, because these are a very significant influence on the English budget. So let's establish these local councils in each province. After trading, it's time to focus on our production, mainly workshops, to such goods as cloth, crystals, and everything that is not grain, fish. After the French workers, it's time for the Byzantine ones. Nice advisors, so cheap. Richard died, and Henry VII Tudor succeeded to the throne. Who began his reign with the recovery of the Burgundian territories? I don't think my troops will even be needed here. England is definitely moving towards an offensive doctrine. He wants to become the master of conquering fortresses. It's time to weaken the imperial power, take a lot of money from it, and free the oppressed people of Tyrol. It's time to carry out a reform that will put things in order with the French nobility. Now it's obvious that they won't accept it. Fortunately, France itself is destroying this nobility. Okay, but maybe we'll start the process of joining Burgundy to our country. It will take quite a long time, and we will have time to increase it. And after the English Pope, and after a short campaign by Henry VII, we managed to recover all territories of the former Duchy of Burgundy. In fact, it's still a Burgundian duchy, but you know what I mean.
The process of joining Burgundy to France will definitely take a long time. Fortunately, the Burgundian population is very loyal. Therefore, we will take some of the territories from Burgundy earlier. England can always pay off Burgundy's debt, if needed. But why did I take the province with the fort? We liberate part of the former French lands from the Duchy of Savoy. Apart from Nizza, I think England could use access to the Mediterranean. There is so little left for an act of the Union. Unfortunately, we have a problem with one vassal, and a French vassal, because it is not my vassal, so it does not count for this mission. Cool. Uh, judges of the peace. I think it can make the work of the courts easier. Well, all we have to do is wait and hope that France integrates never. After securing the land on the mainland, King Henry said the time had finally come to take care of Scotland, which was actually sacrificed for France and Burgundy. It's time to define the status of the state religion in England. Will we support the Catholic Church, or maybe we will collect additional taxes from it? I think with so many cardinals, it will be worth supporting the Catholic Church for now. Maybe things will be different later. The Swedes are fiercely defending their Scottish ally but we're giving them a beating, a lot. I have a problem. Where is the Scottish army? Somewhere the Scots have 12,000 soldiers. Henry occupies most of the territory in Scotland, including such an epic castle. Just what is he for? And so our ruler, Henry Thevin, said that on his 69th birthday, he would do something stupid from, yes, he will attack Spain and Austria for money. Because why not? Yes, I think that's a rather good idea. The more so that thanks to my ideas, I get forts quite quickly. While this may not necessarily influence France's willingness to join Nevers, what a beating Spain gives me. It must have been a big mistake. Yes. I need more volunteers for the army. I carried out tax reform, more taxes, I like it. I guess I need to discover a new world. Philip the first Tudor ascended the throne in September. He's quite young, that's why I waited so long with this mission to complete it, because now Philip is a much better ruler. 157,000 soldiers died so that 1,500 ducats will go to our treasury. It was worth it, English Renaissance. Okay, a little late, but it's finally here, and now we get an event, a globe theater, which gives us minus 15% of the cost of the idea, provided we have a second level stability advisor hired here, and that modifier is right there. Yes, I feel like I could have done it faster. A very talented cousin ascends to the Burgundian throne, so Philip took his wife and fathered an equally talented heir, rather. Of course, France is beginning to integrate its greatest vassal, unfortunately not the one we need. It also integrates this too. Okay, Neva's chances for integration are increasing. Our ruler decided that he would need to invest in barracks after all, for the army, and we build these barracks practically everywhere. From what I can see, our king has no way to invest in these provinces now because everything is built up here. Well, almost everything. Wow, we're creating the London Stock Exchange. Inflation is just a number. Oh, Henry VIII. Was it the ruler who invented a way around the problem of not getting divorced? Being the third child of the previous king, young Henry was not to inherit the throne. Accordingly, he received a universal education. Yes. I think that might explain why previous rulers were hopeless. Meanwhile, I think Henry VIII will make a pretty good king. Yes, our England earns quite well. Only this inflation. You see, I've expanded our fleet, and now it's time to build merchant ships. Would you believe that this is the only vassal that France has not integrated? What is wrong with this country? Well, for some reason, France just didn't integrate its vassal. And until he integrates it, there's nothing I can do. And everything was f***ed. The Dutch revolt has broken out. There has been an uprising against the English crown in France, after which the French nobility decided that this is the moment when it is necessary finally integrate all lesser vassals. The English Golden Age has also begun. Here's my little thought. Possibly there was no governing in France, that's why it didn't integrate the last vassal. Finally Burgundy under our rule, although it has been under our rule for a very long time. Unfortunately, we are in conflict with the papacy. The Reformation broke out in Europe. Of course, it has also reached England, and the English are fighting each other for religious supremacy. But everything depends on my will. I mean king. And our king, however, favors the Reformation because it will weaken the papal influence in his own court. Fortunately, Dutch revolt is shielding me from a religious war in England because for some reason you can only have one disaster in the country at a time. I invite you to Poland. We have crises here every week. England has many vassals. I think that's why influence ideas will be a good choice. Henry VIII sets out to finish his case in Scotland, because how to say it, he forgot about it a bit. Scotland was subjugated, and finally the British Isles were united. And since our king wanted more wives, he introduced his own religion. I mean, it's not an official position. A cut and a new wife. Of course, Anglicanism has many other advantages. This is called an extended mission. The supremacy of the church is in the hands of the king. I think it's a 
good idea. We can now take the land from the church too. Okay, and you know what? I'd almost ruin everything because the Pope could give this province to France, but I'm literally missing one province. So we're going into a classic war with the papacy, a dot of hate in the middle of France. But how? I don't have a diplomatic reputation. Well, I have to wait seven years. Fortunately, we have developed some new ideas in our country. And finally, after almost 100 years, the English and French dynasties may be united. Just a little debate in Parliament. Only, of course, the ruler must enforce it, then financially persuade the lords. And thus the kingdom of the Angevins was born. Yes, our country is definitely entering a new way of life. We're becoming an empire. We are making a real act of union. I'm still doing a lot of other things, but most importantly, we now have these powerful national ideas. See for yourself. Increased empower, improving relationship, core creation cost, national taxation, more taxes, and what I wanted to show you here. Number of possible parliamentary issue. It seems to me that this is the only country in the world that will have such a bonus that is, we can have two bonuses at once chance for a new heir and another thing years to eat personal unions minus 10 years so that's why i wanted the ideas i wanted that i talked about earlier governing capacity increase these are very powerful ideas to wage wars very strong which doesn't surprise me at all yeah because at the end we have a mission to dominate all of Europe. And that's what's ahead of us now. Conquering the Union over Spain. Once we have 15 provinces in Iberia, crossing the mountains to Italy and further conquest of Italy, we will not be emperor. However, we can dissolve the Holy Roman Empire. But look, if only we had stayed Catholic. A very easy way to get support from the electors. And we get another effect of Parliament all at once. Wow, I would like to say that I even earn more. But not so much. But I can field 140,000 troops. I have a very large fleet. Do you remember this pirate? You can get to know his story in this episode. From Pirate Gotland 